Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to another webinar from Smart Bear. Uh, this is Sergei Sokolov, uh, the resident DJ on the Smart Bear radio station today. Um, in other time, I am the product director for the test and performance line of products. And what we're going to be talking today about is uh, testing APIs. Uh, we all know um, the products that Smart Bear has for uh, testing uh, the UI element, test complete, but uh, there's obviously a lot of stuff uh, behind the user interface that actually creates the magic that is delivered to the user. Our featured speaker today is Ulu Lensmar. He is a co-founder of Everywhere Software, uh, which became part of Smart Bear last year. Uh, he is um, a creator of a worldwide known tool for testing APIs and web services called SOAP UI. I hope that most of you are familiar with the name, and um, if not, then you will be more than familiar with that tool after today's webinar. As far as the agenda, that's pretty standard as far as our webinars go. Uh, there is a little bit of housekeeping that I'll go through. Then uh, Ule is going to take over and um, present SOAP UI, specifically regarding how it can be used for uh, testing APIs. Focusing on uh, REST APIs, rich internet applications, and SOAP. What this tool is really about is functional testing of web services. That's its primary focus. But as you know, web services come in different uh, shades and flavors. Uh, one of the particular interesting topics that we are going to cover is testing from the angle of web service security. Uh, that's a sort of a non-functional component of a system that uh, sometimes gets overlooked in SOAP UI can help you uh, restore that integrity. And of course, automating web service testing is going to be uh, underscoring all of that presentation as uh, this is what ultimately Smart Bear is trying to do, make your life easier through automating things that you don't want to spend your time on doing. Uh, we will also do a sneak peek into um, a new product from Smart Bear, Load UI Pro for load testing. Uh, so after that, uh, which is going to take approximately 35 to 40 minutes, we'll go into question and answer. So where do the questions come from? Well, we got a fair bit. Thank you so much for submitting your questions when you registered. You can also submit questions at any time of this webinar via the questions widget on the GoToWebinar panel. So we'll get them, sort them, and hopefully answer all of them. Uh, we also have um, a parallel event on Twitter uh, to this webinar, so you can basically participate in that event live to engage a broader audience. Uh, please use hashtags SOPY and test complete. Uh, so this session will be live during the webinar and after the webinar, so uh, we'll follow up on anything that you guys post and carry the discussion forward. Uh, for those who want to revisit the topics that we're going to discuss today, pass that on to your colleagues, or maybe you haven't been able to actually log on uh, because of schedule conflicts, don't worry. Um, you will get a recording of this webinar sent to your inbox via email, as we usually do. With that, uh, let me transfer uh, the presenter <coughs> and welcome Ule Lensmar. Ule, you are on. Okay. Sergey, can you hear me? Very well. Very I well. can actually see you as well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not um, the first time, but... <laughs> no, it's not the first time. The and uh, I promise I'm not going to uh, uh, spoil this event by showing my face to you all the time, but I do want to say hello to everyone watching this webinar. Uh, it's great to have you here. I'm excited to be able to show SOAP UI to a new um, group of people. Maybe you've used it before, maybe you're just curious. Uh, as uh, Sergey did in his very nice introduction, I'm, I'm one of the creators of SOAP UI. I'm going to walk you through um, a bunch of features in SOAP UI, focusing on functional testing, security testing, automation, 
And finally, also looking a little bit on the uh, at the load testing features uh, now available through Load UI and Load UI Pro. I'm also going to do uh, uh, all the stuff I'm going to show you is using the latest beta 2 release of Soap UI 4.5, which was actually released today. So hopefully we don't stumble in too many bugs. Uh, usually we, uh, that can happen in a uh, demo situation like this. I'm sure you have seen that happen yourself. Um, We'll just uh, go with the flow, and um, yeah. And so I don't have a lot of slides. Uh, I actually I only have uh, one slide to show you, and that says, "Oops, seeing is believing," uh, which means that I'm not going to show you any more slides. I'm going to go straight and do the demo for you. So uh, now I hope you can all see SoapUI now. It's uh, maximized on my screen. So I'm just going to start by giving you a quick overview of the actual tool itself. Uh, it, it's not very original in its uh, way of uh, presenting its functionality to you as a user. As the standard layout of a, some kind of navigational tree to the left, properties down here to the left as well, and a, a main working area in the, um, uh, on the yeah, uh, in front of you. And as uh, we've already noted, this is a tool for testing APIs. So uh, and and basically mainly focused on, on APIs that use uh, HTTP as their uh, communication protocol. Uh, so that would be SOAP or REST or AMF, but you can use it as well for JMS and JDBC testing. And since it has a lot of uh, support for scripting, uh, using the Groovy scripting language, if you're good at that, you can basically use it to test whatever you want. But I'm going to focus on the features that don't require scripting. And also, you might be aware that there's a free version of SOAPI. I'm going to be using SOAPI Pro, the commercial version, which has a lot of extra features. Uh, I will try to point out if I do something that's pro-specific, but I think most of the features I'm going to show you are uh, especially enhanced in the pro version. So when it comes to uh, APIs, uh, specifically, let's start with SOAP and REST. Uh, 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 when it comes to SOAP, you usually you start with a, almost always you have a contract, uh, a WSTL file, which defines the actual API. And the WSTL file is something that's great for tools like SOAPUI, because if you feed it into SOAPUI, SOAPUI can read that WSTL and from it uh, deduct a lot of information about your API, your service, and use that information both to validate that you're getting the right types of responses back and also help you send the right requests to the service. For REST services, uh, that's not as common. There is a corresponding standard, uh, WADL, W-A-D-L. It's not as commonly used, uh, but it does have the same um, uh, idea behind it to help uh, tools uh, interact with the service in a more automated way. Here in this demo project I prepared for you, I have imported a WIS tool from a demo service I'm going to be using. And I've also defined the corresponding REST service uh, uh, manually, basically. You can see the uh, structure here with uh, resources and methods and uh, requests. So we'll get back to that. Uh, the whistle itself, uh, which is basically an XML file that's probably nothing you, you want to be uh, reading too often yourself, defines a number of operations. And uh, SOPI presents, presents this in a nicely structured way here. And also, I can just open up an operation here and fire away a request to my service. Uh, and uh, SOAP UI has generated the simple SOAP request required. And here you can see the response. And you can see it in XML or in more like a tree view, or also in more uh, non, uh, what do you say, uh, technical view, if that's what you want. You can also see the actual raw HTTP response if you want to check out the actual headers that was returned by your server depends on what level of interest you have. Um, and uh, if, uh, if you have uh, the request I was doing here, doesn't take any input. But of course, if I have a, a request that uh, requires me to add some input, uh, SOAPUI will nicely generate a form for you, allowing you to input that data uh, and making it easy for you to construct even very complex requests instead of having to work with the underlying XML. Uh, which could be pretty tedious, uh, as you might know if you're familiar with XML. Uh, what, we, what I've been doing here is basically I've imported my whistle into SOAP UI, and I've, I've been showing you 
just shooting away one or two requests. And that's what we usually call ad hoc testing. And that's a pretty common practice if you're a developer uh, that's integrating with a web service or you're developing a web service or an API and just want to see that it's responding as you expect it to. Uh, the next step but then would be, of course, to create a more structured functional test of your service that would validate that it's working as expected. And I have uh, conveniently prepared uh, a couple of uh, tests we're going to look at here uh, just to see how those things can work. So in SOAP UI, uh, we have a, uh, the, the, the object here is that you define test suites and the test suite can contain any number of test cases and the test case can contain any number of test steps. And the test steps are what uh, actually perform, is, is performed to validate the functionality of your target services. And you can have any number of test steps in your uh, test case and they can do almost anything you can come up with. Uh, you can have test cases that have hundreds of test steps performing very, very complex transactions to validate that your system is, is doing everything it should in a very long flow. Or it can be pretty short like the one we're seeing here, uh, which is just basic uh, login, log out test case, uh, which um, uh, validates that I, when I log in to my uh, service, I get a valid session ID back, and then when I log out, that I get a, an okay result back. And let's look a little bit in more detail into how that works. So as the first step in my uh, test case here, I have a um, uh, request to do the login. And this is basically the same type of request we had here. Uh, if I submit that to my server, you can see that I'm getting a session ID in the XML response back if I specify valid credentials, which I'm doing here. Um, and what I, um, the next step then uh, is I want to do a logout and the logout uh, request uh, requires me to specify that session ID as input and will return here uh, the value true if it succeeds or false if it doesn't. And this is a very common scenario where you're using the response of one request as input to the uh, a requ in a re following request in your test. And for that specific case, there is a test step type called the property transfer, which is used to basically extract uh, the session ID from the response and write it to the, uh, uh, the input of the following request. And uh, this uh, is not restricted to having to be between the same web service. You could very well mix in your test case requests to uh, several web services, different servers, REST services, GDBC requests, etc. and pull uh, request and response data from any of those and use it as input to any of the other requests. So there's no restriction here to only test one service at a time or one REST API at a time. And if I run this little test case here, it's basically going to perform the login, it's going to copy the session ID from the response, to the logout request and um, do that. And as you see here, uh, everything came out in green here and you can also see in the log here at the bottom uh, a little bit more detailed. Here we can double click and we can see the actual request that was sent and the response that we got back. And similarly we can do that for the uh, logout request. And here we can see that it actually sent the same session ID that we re received in the response to the request. There are a lot of different test steps here. I'm just I'm going to be showing you uh, a little bit more in just a while, but just to give you an overview, so most of these test steps or many of these are, are for different types of requests. So SOAP, REST, HTTP, AMF, GDBC requests. There are a number of test steps uh, related to flow logic. If you want to have a branching or if you want to call another test case as part of your test case to do more modular testing, that's definitely possible. There's also a bunch of features for data-driven testing. So if you want to have feed the test data into your tests, uh, for example, from an Excel file or a JDBC or a relational database, I'm going to show you an example of that in just a little while. But uh, before we do that, I'm going to go to one of the core features of functional testing, and that is that you want, when you do a functional test, you also want to validate that the response you're getting back is valid. 
And uh, to do that, uh, SUPUI uh, has a concept of assertions, which is not uncommon uh, in testing. Um, what it basically means that to this uh, login request and the logout request as well, I can add any number of uh, assertions to validate that the response is what I want it to be. And there are a lot of different assertions I can choose from. They can be moderately simple. I just want to check, for example, that I'm not getting a SOAP fault message back. Let's add one of those. Or I can add an assertion, which I've already done here, to validate that I'm actually getting a session ID back in the login response. And these assertions can be uh, extremely complex. So if you're getting a response that has a very uh, elaborate data structure, you can add assertions to validate uh, that data in any way you might want to. And that's really one of the keys of functional testing, that you, you want to validate that you're uh, getting the expected response back. So here I, I have an assertion that checks that I'm getting a, a session ID back. Obviously I can't validate the value of the session ID since that's going to change between every login. If there was like a common structure for session IDs, I could add a validation for that, of course. Uh, but uh, if we look at the logout request, I have also a assertion here, which is basically checking that the logout response contains a true value, uh, which means that the logout was successful. And I could add more assertions here, for example, checking that I'm not getting an error, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is uh, uh, basically up to you as a tester to decide how much of the response do we want to validate, uh, etc. Um, from our experience, uh, the more you validate, uh, usually the better. Of course, there's a maintenance cost involved if your uh, messages change or the contract changes, but usually there are quite a lot of assertions. So that was that. That was a really quick rundown uh, of the very basic functional testing. Uh, so I'm going to. Uh, dive into uh, just for the sake of showing you the data-driven testing because that's a very, very popular feature. And what it means is that uh, pretty often when you do uh, a functional test, you have test data in some external data source. That could be a file, it could be an Excel sheet, it could be a database, whatever. And you want to use that data to feed into your tests. So um, what I have here is a data-driven test which uh, calls the get item uh, request and it's going to call that both for the SOAP uh, interface for my API but also for the REST interface which will return a JSON response. And we can open the actual Excel file which looks like this uh, and I have here a list of ID numbers and names of uh, uh, smartphones and also what they cost here in my uh, bogus database. And what I want to do is I want to run through if I, that if I input these IDs to the get item call, I want to validate that these are actually the names I'm getting back from the database. And to, so to set that up, I have a simple functional, simple functional test here, uh, another test case. I've, uh, the first test step now is a data source where I point at the Excel file and uh, I can just run this just to see that it's reading the correct data from the um, data source. Uh, then I have two requests. One request is uh, calling the get item soap uh, interface and here I'm using what we call property expansion which is basically it pulls the ID from the data source into the request and similarly in this rest request uh, I'm doing the same thing. I'm using the ID from the data source as an ID. And here I'm getting a JSON response back uh, from the server. And of course in the other stop response here I'm getting an XML response back. And then to both of these I've added assertions, uh, 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 XML based assertions. And so I have an XPath statement which basically selects the name of the phone that it uh, gets from the database and then it tells the assertion that it should, the name should match the name column in my data source. So basically this will validate that for each row I'm going to go through, it'll get the phone from the, the item database and validate that the name is the same as in my Excel sheet. And it's going to do this for both JSON and XML. And when it comes to JSON, um, uh, SOAPUI internally converts all JSON responses to XML 
And it does that so you can use all those XML related features like assertions, property transfers, etc. Uh, on JSON responses just as if they were XML. So you can very easily make a request to REST service that returns JSON and then use that output from that as input to another J um, REST request but also to a SOAP request or a JDBC query if you want to validate that uh, the actual database was updated uh, correctly, etc. So let's just close these two. Um, and if you remember the, the Excel sheet, actually I don't remember myself, yeah, it had four rows. So uh, when I run this test, I, uh, I, it's going to loop over these two requests four times. So let's just run this. And you can see it jumping up and down here. Um, and uh, as you can see, uh, it also ran all those requests here. And so just for the, the sake of actually showing you an error, let's just change something in the Excel sheet. Let's save that. And uh, run it again. And now, hopefully, when we run this, you will see that I'm getting a failure. And now it's saying that the, the content of the name failed. It was ex uh, expecting uh, the new value I entered in the Excel sheet, but the actual value I got back from my database was, of course, the old value that was written there. Uh, and you can see it failed directly on the SOAP uh, request step, so it, um, it terminated the test case at that point, which means, of course, that it won't be able to go on. So, that's a, a quick rundown of data-driven testing in conjunction with functional testing. So, I'm going to move on pretty quickly here uh, and go to uh, the uh, aspect of security testing, which is a pretty big uh, topic that we've focused heavily on in the 4.0 release on SOAPUI. So, just to give you a short background, so, so a security testing in SOAPUI is what we call functional security testing. And what that means is that it'll, uh, you can use SOAPUI to test for security vulnerabilities that are related to the functionality of your service. Uh, and that means that it's not going to be able to test for vulnerabilities related to the configuration of your network card or your web server or something in your protocol stack or something like that. This is targeted specifically at the functionality that you have, you're exposing from your APIs. Uh, there are other tools that are much better at testing more for vulnerabilities at other levels in the network infrastructure. And uh, uh, the, the there are, of course, a huge amount of different types of vulnerabilities out there, and there is an organization called OWASP, which maintains a list of top 10 security vulnerabilities, and I'm sure you, you, uh, you might have heard of uh, the Sony PlayStation uh, security vulnerability that was, happened last year. Uh, we did a whole webinar based on that, which was a SQL injection into attack, which is a pretty simple uh, security vulnerability. That's very easy to test for so API. It's also very easy to, to uh, miss as a, when you're implementing your service to not handle that correctly. So I've prepared a simple um, a security test here uh, in uh, SOAPUI. Uh, so let's just walk through that before I run it. So basically what SOAPUI does for security, functional security testing is that it it's, takes a, fun, uh, a normal functional test and we're going to be using this uh, login logout functional test. And on top of that allows you to layer a number of security scans. And a security scan is basically a, uh, it's basically, a, 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 a SOAPUI is going to attempt to attack your service uh, and try to exploit uh, commonly known uh, vulnerabilities. And there are a bunch of pre-configured uh, security scans supported. And this is, we've chosen once again those based on, on the ones that are common. And uh, the SQL injection one is probably the one that's most um, uh, common you read about. But uh, any security scan or attack that uh, aims at somehow making, um, bringing your system into a state where it's vulnerable for attack. It could be either that the, the, the request itself actually reveals gives the, the attacker access to your system, but it could also be just that the request provokes an error message that tells the attacker something about your system that you don't want them to know. For example, a very simple example is that if you don't have very good error handling in your service, 
uh, your APIs, maybe the error that's returned from the service uh, tells the attacker that you're using a certain version of a certain database vendor and maybe even gives it some information on what the names of the tables and database are. And if that's maybe enough for the attacker to know, okay, they're using this version of that database and I know that there are these security vulnerabilities related to that and there is et cetera, et cetera. And that gives them like a, uh, a point of entrance. So it's really important to test uh, for just really simple things uh, and make sure you're, you're really not making it too easy for, for uh, uh, people to uh, do some kind of malicious uh, attacks to your system. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I've added a SQL injection attack to this login request. And the SQL injection attack, what it basically does is that it inserts a SQL database uh, statements into the request parameters in the hope that uh, the service itself will just take those and blindly insert them into some kind of uh, SQL uh, statement uh, in its turn. And when it does that, the, the resulting SQL statement, which is basically a merging of the one that the API wants to use and the one that the attacker has provided, will result in uh, uh, not the desired effects. So let's just look at how that works. I'm going to run this. Um, security scan here, the security test, uh, just to show you what it looks like. Uh, so what it did here now is that it ran the login request and then it re-ran the login again, but it, if for the, uh, both for the username and for the password fields in the login, it uh, inserted SQL statements that, that are commonly known to be used in exploits. And uh, for, uh, I've also here, so th th this is a tricky part of, of the security testing, so what is uh, the valid response for the service uh, in a situation like this? And uh, in a situation like this, I said that if someone tries a SQL injection, you should, uh, the response you should do back is that you sh there should not be a session ID in the response. So I've added an assertion, just like we had assertion for our functional tests, I've added an assertion here that checks that there is not an accession ID in the response. But when I ran the test here, it turned out that for two requests, uh, this one here and this one here, I actually did get a session ID in the response. So if we double click here, we can see that uh, what happened in those requests that the SOAP UI sent admin as a username and then it sent this little uh, nifty string here as the password. And uh, what happened on the server then is that it actually returned the session ID to me, which was totally unexpected because this is not the valid password. But uh, the clumsy programmer who wrote this service on the server, which incidentally was myself, uh, did it in a way that, uh, that this uh, specific SQL statement would actually uh, fool the service into thinking that this was actually a valid login and return session ID. And now I've managed to log in with that and now can do whatever this user could have done. And uh, similarly, if we go down here, uh, the same failed for the request where that SQL statement was specified as username. And once again, I got a session ID back, which is not what I wanted. We can look at some of the others here. what I want my service to return in any any kind of input that it, it, it receives from a, a client that's trying to uh, call into the service. Um, yeah, so so that's a very quick introduction of, of security testing and in SOAP UI it's fairly easy to create your security test. So if you have a functional test case like this, you select the new security test wizard and there's actually a, a wizard in SOAP UI Pro that will automatically generate uh, a security test with all the, the uh, supported attacks all pre-configured for those requests. I'm not going to run this because it will take a long, long time. You still will um, by yourself have to go in and add the assertions uh, by yourself because only you can know what is actually the expected response from your service in these situations and that's the hard part with security testing maybe that 
It's not something that the tool can do entirely for you, but it's just like functional testing. The, the tool can help you create the requests and check that the response is valid in regard to uh, schemas, but you, you're only the one, you're the only one that knows as a tester what I actually expect to come back. <coughs> so you're the one who has to add those assertions and validations uh, from their response message. Yeah, and if you hear some strange drilling noises, that's because uh, uh, I'm in a building where there's some construction going on, and I apologize for that in advance. Okay, so that was a very quick rundown of uh, the basics of functional testing and data-driven testing, also some security testing. Uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, take a quick look at, uh, at automation of these tests, and by automation, I mean, or what we mean is how to run these tests automatically. Uh, you, maybe you want to run them on a daily basis, or you want to run them every time some external trigger is, I don't know, what some external condition is fulfilled. And uh, SOAP UI has a bunch of uh, command line tools uh, included that allow you to run both functional tests and security tests from the command line which means you can run them from almost any build tool out there that supports invoking command lines. So if you're using uh, more Java-based tools like Hudson or Bamboo or Cruise Control, or if you're using uh, uh, more Microsoft like Automated Build Studio or MS Build, I'm sh you, you can be able to set up that uh, execution of SOAP UI functional tests and security tests uh, from the command line. And when it's from running from the command line, you get uh, you can get there are of course a lot of command line arguments that you can set to um, give you the uh, yeah the um, uh, reports and output that you might be interested in. So just to show you how that what that looks like, I have here uh, running locally Hudson, which is a, a free um, a continuous integration server, also called Jenkins, depends on uh, which version or branch you're using. And I've set up here to run uh, both functional and security tests from the command line. So uh, let's just go into the functional tests and run those. And uh, we can look at, this is the command line output. And here you can see that uh, this is basically uh, SOAP UI running um, the, the same tests that we ran in the GUI here in SOAP UI are now being run from the command line. We can go back to the project and we can see that it was successful and we can also look at the test results. There aren't a lot of results to see here. And we can also look at graphs and things like that here. That will give you over time uh, how results went. And we can of course do the same thing for security tests. Let's just do that just for the sake uh, of seeing is believing. Uh, so. Uh, you can see it's running it's running the SQL injection test, the same test that I showed you. And since this failed for the uh, um, uh, when it passed this specific SQL statement uh, as username and password, uh, the test will also fail here in Hudson, of course. And uh, you can see the test results here. Let's see if we can um, get a nice Isn't a nice output for that one? Maybe here. Nope, nothing here. Um, at least it, it, it'll help you see. Uh, yeah, run this continuously. And the case for uh, continuous uh, automated testing for functional testing and for security testing. I mean, for functional testing, it, it may be pretty easy to say, sure, we're, we're, this is a system under development. It's pretty good to know that we're not introducing any functional errors while we're adding new features. Uh, you might be thinking, well, security testing, is that the same case? And I say definitely. Uh, there's a similar um, need to, to uh, validate security continuously because you never know. You might upgrade some system component. You might uh, change something uh, in just in functionality of your service. You might be introducing some new components that have adverse side effects on how security is handled you might be doing some reconfiguration on the server as well that might somehow change how error messages are propagated to the client, once again resulting in maybe the client getting a bit too much information about what's going wrong on the server, which could lead to the exploit situation that I was talking about um, a little while ago. Um, 
Yeah, so that's a really quick rundown of, of the automa automation and automation possibilities. Uh, I think we have users, as I already mentioned, uh, automating their tests from any um, in most types of environments. And of course, you can run these on a headless environment. If you have a build servers running on uh, Linux or whatever, uh, you can install just the SOAP UI on that. Uh, so SOAP UI will run on, on both PC, Mac, and, and Linux machines and have the tests uh, executed there while you can still be authoring the tests on the Linux machine, of course, if that's the tool, the environment you're working on. So that was that uh, quick uh, look at automation. Um, so the last thing uh, that I was going uh, to show you a little bit more, um, I do see I have some, uh, maybe a little bit more time, but I'm going to uh, show you uh, Load UI. So for load testing, uh, there, there, although there is some very basic load testing functionality in SOAP UI, uh, usually uh, I would say that you're much better off using Load UI and you can use uh, both, there's a free version and now also a commission version of Load UI, Load UI Pro. And I'm going to show you how that looks. And Load UI is a, um, looks very, very different from both SOAP UI and from what load testing tools do in general. And uh, the the um, and the, there's one um, main uh, reason behind that. There are a couple of reasons, of course. I think one big idea we had when we created Load UI is we wanted to explore the possibilities to do more real-time load testing and more interactive load testing, because from our experience, um, when people previously do load tests, is they set up a certain condition of number of users, virtual users, and then they run that test for an hour and then they analyze the results. And while that is a perfectly valid way to do load tests, there is also another type of more exploratory load testing where you play around with the target system, where you add the load, what you, you increase the load a bit, you see how the server behaves, you maybe you add some more virtual users that are running another user scenario and you change the, the uh, how that ramps up and down all while the test is running and uh, you continuously monitor, okay, what's happening on the server and then maybe you find out, wait, when I added this, I increased the load over 100, we're starting to get congestion errors in the SQL server or in some uh, network interface or something like that. It's just like you could compare uh, exploratory functional testing where you're basically trying to break a tool by finding things that are not working correctly. Uh, compared to automated functional testing where you run the same test in a controlled way over over again, you can use Load UI to do more of this exploratory load testing uh, in conjunction with, of course, doing more of the structured uh, uh, automated load testing that's, uh, I think, uh, commonly done. Uh, and so, uh, uh, Load UI uh, basically uh, has a very different graphical interface where you drag and drop components and you uh, assemble them together to, to um, uh, generate load. And what I've done here is I've uh, created a simple project and I've added a SOAP UI runner component which basically runs the same uh, test case, login, logout test case. And then I've added a generator here. I'm just going to start this, uh, get it running. And the, so this virtual, <laughs> virtual user generator is now generating one virtual user per second. And um, this might be hard to see, but you can see down here that it's ticking up. Uh, so uh, for one, every virtual user, it's like sending over to this uh, virtual test case, it's executing that. So we can just increase the load here by turning this dial. So now I'm up to 28 users per second. And I can see down here, of course, that the, the corresponding uh, number of executions of my test case increases. And uh, where would we be without statistics and uh, when you're doing load tests? So here in, in uh, Load UI, there is a statistics workbench, and it, it basically it allows you to um, monitor uh, the, the statistics you might be interested on. And this here I'm, in, I'm monitoring CPU and network utilization on the server that I'm loading currently. And you can see this little uh, increase here, which is now scrolled out of view which was when I increased the load over here. So uh, let's just to show you what happens. You can probably uh, guess. So I'm going to just increase the load a little bit more now. So we're now up at 93 uh, virtual users per second here. 
uh, you can see now that on the server we're also starting to get much higher load on both on the CPU and on the network. And so while this is running, I'm saying, okay, let's see how the server behaves if I add the execution of another of those SOAP UI test cases. So let's just uh, add another SOAP UI runner. The, my load test is running here still. I'm not stopping it. I'm going to browse to my project file here. Uh, SOAP UI project file. Here we go. And I'm going to use a different test case, one that I didn't show you. It's called uh, get items, which is really simple. This just basically uh, gets items from my database. And I'm going to use, instead of having a, a generator that generates a fixed load, I'm going to use a generator called variance, which varies a lot. So let's put that out here. And uh, as soon as I connect these two over here, and let's increase the load a little bit over here, you're going to see that, okay, over here to the right, my server is starting to uh, even more load on the network. And of course, well, the CPU wasn't very much affected because this isn't a very high, so let's just increase that. Now we're doing 100 uh, virtual users here, and we have 93 here. And you can see that also the CPU on the server, uh, which is a machine somewhere else in our network over here, is, is, is ramping up. And in this way, I can do like ex the exploratory type of testing where I can basically add more load, I can play around, I could of course start monitoring other statistics on the server uh, in real time uh, and just see how the system behaves and get a totally different maybe understanding of, of how the system behaves uh, while, while ch the load changes. So let's just decrease here, turn these things back down here. And, uh, and eventually we're going to see that, yeah, as you can see now here, it's dropping back down to the server. Uh, load is dropping back down on the server. Um, and the SOAP UI, uh, sorry, Load UI Pro has a wealth uh, of features also for assertions and for doing distributed testing. So I could distribute these tests very easily to run on other agents in my network, but also if I want to run them from Amazon, that's totally doable in a very nice graphic way. I don't have time to show you that right here, uh, but uh, if you go to our websites, you can of course read more and see movies and all that kind of stuff regarding that. And I think that concludes my extremely uh, uh, <laughs> quick demo of uh, SOAP UI with functional testing, security testing, our uh, test automation, and also the sneak peek of Load UI 2. And um, I'm just going to, yeah, I've stopped the test here. I'm just going to go back to SOAP UI like we had it over here. And also going to go back so you can actually see me. And uh, I think the word, um, yeah, we can actually go back to the the PowerPoint uh, and uh, going to the next part of this webinar. I think the word, uh, I'm giving, handing this back to you, Sergey, right? Sergey? Well, I think now we basically shuttle back and forth. Yes, I yeah. am. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. So, uh, that was the that was what I was uh, intended to show you all here. I hope I didn't go too fast, and I hope it it was somewhat readable on this uh, super high resolution screen, uh, uh, just to get give you a general idea of all the functions. So uh, I guess we're open for questions now. Sergey, do you want to do you have a lead on that in some way or? Um, Uli, yeah. Can you? Everybody can hear me. All right. Uh, so there is a bunch of questions uh, that. Uh, have streamed in during the webinar. Mm -hmm. um, I guess well, you can open the questions box there. They will you will yeah. see the list, and I assigned a bunch to you. So I think we should um, concentrate on those first. There were a couple that related to uh, functional testing and test complete and integration, but I think I'd rather leave those for the end if we have okay. time but we'll uh, spend most of the time answering uh, the questions regarding SOAP UI. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, so uh, take, take it away. I just, yeah, I can, I'm just looking at the list here. Uh, I'll just take it from the top here. And those are, you said answer to me, right? Uh, that's yes, that's correct. Yeah. That, that was the point. Yep. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, okay, I get it now. Uh, okay, so, um, okay, I'm just going to go from the top here. Uh, would it be possible to get examples of how to utilize Ruby and Silk UI? Um, I don't have any examples. We don't have any examples of that. I know we have some users doing that. Uh, and you could, of course, uh, call into JRuby from the scripting possibilities in SOAPUI. I don't know in which order if, did you want to call SOAPUI from Ruby. Maybe then that, the command line tools is what you're looking for. If you want to do it the other way around, you can definitely call um, uh, JRuby scripts uh, from, from Groovy in SOAPUI. Uh, but I don't have any hands-on examples. There might be some examples on the web, though, because I, this is uh, not... Um, uh, uh, not an uncommon thing. So I'm scrolling down the list. Um, yeah, okay, so would like to know about team testing support with SVN. So SOAPUI um, Pro has the concept of composite projects, uh, which means that you can split a, a project into a bunch of small files, uh, which you can manage independently in SVN or CVS or whatever uh, uh, social management system you're using. Um, that works reasonably well. I think uh, it's definitely better than just having one monolithic project file as it is in the free version of SOAPUI. Uh, that being said, I think we would want to improve that in future versions, but it's definitely possible in uh, SOAPUI Pro. And I'm hoping I'm answering these questions uh, in a um, relevant way. Uh, so next question here, uh, hope, uh, how can we do JSON validation using assertions? Uh, just like I mentioned, uh, SOAPUI converts uh, JSON responses to XML, which gives you access to all the XML-based assertions for JSON responses. So you can do uh, all those kinds of uh, content-based assertions with um, the on JSON content. And of course, since you have uh, scripting possibilities you can, using that, you can do any kind of validations. Uh, how do you create a REST request with JSON parameters? Um, well, that would be a, um, uh, a SOAP, uh, a post or put request, I would guess. Uh, I can just show you, although I don't, I don't have one with actual JSON content. I can open a post request here. Uh, uh, so if you have a post request, uh, you could here in the uh, request content, you specify media type application JSON, and then here insert the basic the JSON uh, string that you want a block of code that you want to send to service. And you can use uh, property expansions to insert dynamic uh, parameters, just like we did for the data-driven testing example in the, same, in, in the similar fashion. So that's definitely doable uh, or applicable there as well. Okay, these are the short answers to your questions. Let me see. Uh, scrolling down here, sorry for the wait. Um, does the security test cover all OWASP 2010 attacks? Uh, no, it does not. I think uh, some of the OWASP uh, attacks are not strictly functional testing attacks or more attacks that are related to uh, f things further down in the, the infrastructure. I think there are some session hijacking based attacks which are more targeted a little deeper down and there are probably some buffer overrun related attacks which are also uh, re related to not functional aspects. And we will uh, definitely uh, update SOAPUI uh, uh, if OWASP, uh, when OWASP makes major updates. I mean, we won't, probably won't do it immediately, but as the next major release is rolling out, we, we will um, uh, strive to incorporate those new security, related to security scans into SOAPUI. Can I run, next question here, uh, can I run multi-thread tests using command line? Uh, yes, uh, so load UI just like Sophia has command line runners, so you can run the tests that I did from uh, Hudson, etc., and generate reports. I, I totally skipped the report generation part of both SOAPUI and load UI. Uh, both tools have elaborate support for creating PDFs and all that kind of stuff to 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 make you and your managers happy, uh, and you can run those uh, definitely from the command line in both situations. Um, let me see. Sometimes we observe that running testers uses supply the CPU. Um, yeah, well, uh, how to resolve this is probably to get in touch with our support and we'll try to try to reproduce. It's, it could be a bug in SOAPUI uh, uh, when it's running your, your requests. It, it's hard to know. 
uh, I don't have a stock resolution for that, unfortunately. I think it's something we would have to have a more discussion on offline. Um, okay, here's a question. I think we've had a similar question twice uh, of do using simulating different I IP addresses. Actually, that's uh, something that we don't, uh, we have the same question, don't support currently in neither SOPUI and LoadUI. So that's uh, definitely something we will, have, uh, we will add in a future release. Uh, but uh, simulating f uh, multiple IP addresses is not supported from a single client. Of course, you can, as I mentioned, you can do distributed testing so you can spread your agents to a number of clients, but then you would only be simulating the, the IPs of those clients, so it probably wouldn't be thousands, but maybe in the tens uh, at least. Uh, next question, is the statistics data saved? If so, where? Uh, I think that's for LoadUI, yes. Uh, LoadUI, the, the, the charts you were seeing, it saves all that data in a, a, a database on the disk, and it also has features for you can uh, visually compare results, so you, if, when you run your test, you can open open the results from a previous test and see them in the same chart and you, you can basically compare them to each other. It's a, it's a, a database called H2, so it's a technical thing. You can also export results to uh, raw data so you can import it into Excel or any other type of um, uh, analysis tool uh, if you want to do some custom analysis or charting or things like that. Um, let me see. I'm just rushing ahead here, Sergey. You're going to have to uh, interrupt me if you want to uh, uh, do anything different. Uh, uh, let me see. I have SOPI version 401 in that where I can see functional testing model as well. That's, uh, the, the functional testing I showed you is the same in 401. That hasn't changed for, uh, for a long time. So if you create your, uh, you import your whistle into, into um, SOPI, you right-click on the project, there's a new test suite uh, option, and then in the test suite you can, you can right-click on that and create a new test case, and there you have this whole f uh, uh, features for, um, well, I can show this actually, you have all these features here for, sorry, so new test suite, just creates a new test suite, new test case, creates a new test case, and then here I can start adding test steps to my functional test. So that's where you have those features. And it's been like that for ages in some project. Um, let me see. Can you data drive the numbers and types of messages to be received by a mock service? Um, no, mock services themselves do not have uh, uh, built-in support for, for like doing data-driven mock services. Um, you can do it with scripting, of course, but that's maybe a little bit work. Uh, there's a, uh, you can use mock response test steps in your test case, but that, uh, it, it, it gives for a very, uh, pretty limited way of creating data-driven mock services. Maybe that's the way to go, so we need, would need to know more about your actual scenario to give you a good answer on that. Once again, I uh, think maybe you can get in touch with, with our resource. Uh, okay, security test has a bunch of SQL injection strings. How can I get them from the product? So you just go into the uh, SQL injection. Uh, there's an advanced tab here, and you can see them listed here. Uh, you can just copy and paste them uh, from here into your uh, yeah, into how you want to use them. So they're all available, and for all the other attacks, all the scans, sorry. All the configuration strings are available. You can add your own if you want to test for some specific uh, injection attacks or things like that. Uh, let's move ahead. Is it possible to use SOPI to test REST services? Definitely. Uh, I, sh I showed uh, in my functional data-driven functional test, I did. I had a, re uh, a REST request to a, a service that returns JSON. Uh, you can do... Uh, uh, SOPI has pretty advanced support for REST concepts like resources and methods and representations and all that kind of stuff, which is many REST people use REST and don't really use. So if you're a die-hard REST person, I think uh, SOPI is actually a pretty good tool to use, uh, also because it just supports Waddle and schemas and all that kind of stuff. So definitely check out the REST testing stuff on our website. There are demos and things there as well. Uh, does Load UI require SOAP UI? Uh, no, it does not. Uh, uh, but uh, it, so the, I, I showed just the SOAP UI runner, which is used for running SOAP UI test cases in Load UI. There's also a runner for just running arbitrary web requests. 
um, and you can very easily create your own runners. We have examples on that. If you're a good Guru scripter, and there's some other runners for for um, uh, running just arbitrary command line tools. Uh, so, but there's no technical requirement to have SOAP UI installed or to run SOAP UI tests in Load UI, uh, although that's where it makes most sense to do it uh, uh, currently. Uh, so if you create your functional API tests in SOAP UI, you would load, use Load UI to build your load testing scenarios for that. Uh, let me see here. Are there options to step up the load automatically, like a step pattern? Yes, there is a virtual user generator, which is a ramp uh, generator, which will basically do that. And, um, <laughs> Groovy rocks forget about JRuby. I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> um, uh, let me see. Uh, um, looking at the possibility of having the Hudson Sea integrated with our project, uh, or have to go with any other sort of let me see, looking for the potential of having .NET web source after with the site tool company SOPI. I'm not sure I understand the question here actually. I mean you can there's I mean you can test .NET web services uh, all known. I mean there's limited support I would say for WCF, but you can test those from SOPI and run those tests from Hudson. I'm not sorry. Pradeep, oh, Pradeep, I uh, don't uh, quite get the question. I'm sure we can be in touch after, after this to, to uh, sort that one out for you. And now I'm scrolling down here. All right, Uli, since we're yeah. um, coming up uh, at the top of the hour, uh, I'd <laughs> yes. probably just uh, put a couple of, <laughs> yes, uh, excellent questions, though. Yes, uh, very I'd, good. Um, Thank you. Uh, like I'd like to put a couple of um, comments in regarding uh, SOAP UI and test complete. Um, starting with, well, there was a question, what about functional testing? Well, that's actually a great question because functional testing comes in a great many flavors and in fact SOAP UI will do functional testing of your APIs because functional testing basically means if I put in a certain uh, set of parameters, um, will my API function correctly. Uh, however, I suspect that what that question actually meant was what about UI testing because that's what commonly is referred to uh, by saying functional testing. So um, for those who are not familiar with um, that line of products from SmartBear, we have a tool called Test Complete uh, that has its um, so the sole mission in life to provide automation for UI testing, whether it's web applications, uh, .NET applications, Java applications, Windows native applications, and so forth. Um, and so uh, that would be your uh, companion to SOAP UI Pro um, if you were, if you wanted to do higher level functional testing. Um, there's also a set of questions about uh, how to uh, on whether it's possible and how to integrate SOAP UI into Test Complete, which also is a very uh, astute question because um, once you get beyond testing just the web services or just the UI, um, you ask yourself a question, well, how do I uh, make sure that my whole system works? And uh, when it doesn't work, how do I triage what happens in between? Uh, so at this point, um, we uh, don't have direct integration of SOAP UI with Test Complete. Uh, test Complete actually has um, some capability of its own to test uh, web services, even though it's um, a bit less sophisticated than with um, SOAP UI, and we primarily concentrate on Microsoft Web Services, in particular WCF. Uh, but in general, uh, it's a very uh, useful concept to run a test uh, going through the UI and then uh, checking web services, uh, what, what happens in between. Uh, so at this point, the way to integrate SOAP UI with Test Complete would be uh, just at the level of a command line. Test Complete can run uh, SOAP UI uh, by just wrapping SOAP UI as um, a command line invocation and vice versa. So PUI could run test complete if need be. So we will be um, working in the direction of providing tighter integration between the tools 
so that uh, you could actually reuse data from one tool into the other and compose a uh, more complex test, um, including uh, some UI uh, activation and uh, response, and then some web service activation and response. So stay tuned for that. Uh, it's certainly um, an area that we are looking at with uh, particular attention. Mm -hmm. um, with that, I think we are at uh, 201 Eastern. Uh, I'd like to thank um, all the attendees for uh, sticking with us. Uh, all it's been a great presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, you've covered a lot of ground. Uh, thank you. I think it was uh, very useful for our audience. I hope so. Um, so with that, let me wrap up the webinar and uh, wish you all a great day. I hope to see you, or s at least some of you, and hopefully all of you, on future webinars from SmartBear. Um, we also invite you to visit smartbear.com um, and um, pick up a free trial of SOAP UI Pro uh, and Test Complete um, in case uh, the material that we presented today interested you and you want to actually get your hands on one of the tools. Thanks again. Um, have a great Wednesday.